Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Fellas, fellas. Welcome to a toast to the men. Welcome, welcome, fellas. Man, I got a topic I want to touch on. And this is in regards to the 5150 Nation uh, YouTube channel. That's what Corey Holcomb. And he has a few co-hosts uh, on his channel. And it may be a podcast also. I'm not sure. I usually catch it on YouTube, though. And this was an argument that took place between Corey Holcomb and one of the co-hosts, Zoe Williams. Man, there's, there's many layers to this. And I want to be uh, objective as possible and peel back some layers on this because there's uh, many perspectives and many angles to this. Now, let me start off by saying that I'm a Corey Holcomb supporter as far as his comedy. One of my favorite favorite uh, comedians. I didn't say fan because I'm a fan of no man. I only support men, I'm not a fan. Uh, fans can't be objective and they can't critique properly, right? Because they're a fanatic. So I'm not a fanatic, not a fan of anyone, but I do support. And Corey Holcomb is one of the comedians I support. I have uh, seen Corey Holcomb live, perform live at least two times, right? And so, like I say, he's one of my favorite comedians. Uh, his his uh, subject matter is is edgy, uh, it's rough, and it greatly uh, targets women. You know, I can't say that it greatly targets women. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know if he steps outside of that that subject matter of women, and uh, so it's funny to me in a comedian form, right? A comedic form is funny. If he was like that off stage, would I befriend him? No, because I don't want that kind of mess in my ear 24-7, you know, from a friend. And I can't have that kind of energy uh, in my life. But as far as comedy, hey, it's relief. I laugh. It's funny. The way he writes, the way he sets it up, sets up his jokes. Good stuff, you know. Um, so I want to preface this conversation with that before I dive into it. Now, um, I'll have the video of that episode in the description. I have the link in the description. So let's dive into it. The when you watch the video, you'll see that the tension began with uh the, the the female co-host all right all right the female co-host uh ice t's ex-wife right that's where the tension began between her darlene and corey hokum corey had a beef with her about um how she promotes other people's stuff fans material or, or projects or um, businesses, but she doesn't really promote his. And when he does promote his stuff, she kind of giggles or smirks, you know, being, or she's sarcastic. So he addressed her uh, on that. And I thought he was being petty. I thought he was, he was going in a little too hard. It was talking about it a little bit too long, in my opinion. Um, then as the video goes on, he and Zoe begin to get into it, you know, about a confrontation, a past confrontation between Grady, a former, I guess a former friend of Corey's and a former co-host of the show, Ray Grady. So they start defending Grady 
Darlene and Zoe defends Grady against how Corey Holcomb treated him. Right there, that can be an issue. Uh, it is Corey's show. Uh, like Corey stated, he and Grady have been knowing each other over 25 years. I wouldn't get in the middle of that. I wouldn't have an opinion on it publicly or at all. I let those guys figure that out. That was a relationship that was intact before I was in the picture. So I would, I would stay out of that. That's, that's just me. Okay. So the argument starts to escalate. Now it's just Corey and Zoe Williams going at it. Darlene is pretty much out of the picture. You got two or three other guys at the desk just looking. They're not really inputting anything. And it's starting to dig deep. And you can see Corey had been holding in stuff, his issues. We're going back to Darlene, he had been holding that in. But fast forward, it's obvious he had been holding a lot of things against Zoe Williams. You know, he had been holding in some stuff that it should have been addressed earlier in private or the relationship should have been severed if you don't want to address it privately. So that's number one wrong thing on Corey's, um, on Corey's side. He's wrong for that. That should have never been addressed publicly on that platform. That's something that you talk about in, in, in private, face-to-face -face as men. Now, on the other side, Zoe, had been holding in some things also. He complained about how Corey bigs up Kevin Hart about how Kevin Hart takes care of his people and makes them all wealthy, but Corey himself doesn't take care of his people. And Corey hasn't promoted Zoe's platform. Zoe has a, a YouTube channel also. He hasn't promoted any of his books. I think he's written two or three books. He hasn't made any connections. Uh, with Zoe and, and, and uh, you know the friends of the business uh, the business friends of Corey's and Zoe had a problem with that has been having a problem with that he's been holding that in and then we get to Corey being disrespectful and saying that Zoe is the weakest link and the only reason he keeps Zoe around is because Zoe is knowledgeable. Wow, man, that that is, man. When you think about that, that is that is profound and somewhat calculating. Um, yeah, and somewhat in poor spirit. He said he's the weakest link, but he keeps him around because Zoe is knowledgeable. Zoe knows a lot of stuff. Wow. So right there, man, that's that's a lack of respect. But he is pulling from him. He is pulling energy from Zoe, his knowledge. He did acknowledge that Zoe is very knowledgeable. So he pulls from that, but he doesn't really respect him as a man. He implied that Zoe lives off of women, stays with a woman. And Corey said he doesn't have to do that. He doesn't do that. He's a hustler. He, he's, he gets out there and get it. The pandemic didn't stop anything in his life. So he alluded to Zoe's the total opposite. Um, he did mention Zoe owes him $20,000 from uh, court fees, lawyer fees, from a fight Zoe had with Avery Spears. And that was years ago. He's never paid that. And, and Zoe stated, when he hit his lick, when he hit his lick, he's going to pay him back. Now, keep in mind, Zoe said that Corey told him, hey, don't worry about it. I don't need your money. But Corey brings that up on the platform, on the public platform. Lack of respect. Lack of respect. And I'm going to tell you guys why there is a lack of respect. Um, well, before I get to that, 
Now, Zoe is using Corey too. Corey is using Zoe. Zoe is using Corey too. Zoe is using Corey for his platform and the exposure. <clears throat> Even though he has issues with Corey, he 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 suppresses those issues because he's getting something else from Corey that he feels he can't get on his own. So he's like, hey, it's worth it. I trade this, my dignity, my manhood, because I'm getting this. I'm getting exposure. I get to be on this stage with uh, a famous comedian, on this platform with a famous comedian. So it's a trade-off. So they're both using each other for different reasons. But Zoe doesn't respect Corey either. He doesn't respect how he is as a friend. He doesn't respect how Corey uh, addresses issues with his friends and how he takes care of, or doesn't take care of his friends. So there's a lack of respect on both ends and both are using one another also. But they're suppressing these issues. And listen, man, they say pressure busts pipes. And it's true. It's all about the right time. The right time, the right opportunity, the right moment. It's going to be when you least expect it, that that pipe burst. I'm telling you, it's going to come out. That's why it's so important to communicate. To communicate like men. Hey, go to the side. And I address this in the book, A Toast to the Man. I have a chapter, chapter three, drink three, conflict resolution. And I address situations like this. <laughs> man, that, that. That chapter is so, so relevant right now to this, this issue and just and within the world, how men should resolve conflict. And so pick that up and, and let's drink three, drink three conflict resolution. Now. So let's fast forward. There's disrespect from Corey's end. Because he doesn't feel like Zoe can hold his own. And probably deep inside, maybe not even deep inside, maybe right there on the surface, he knows that Zoe is only dealing with him because he can get something from him. And that he probably knows that Zoe really doesn't like him. He may love him, but he doesn't like him. Two different things. Two different things, man. Two different things. So I'm sure Corey knows that. Right? Now, even knowing that, it's up to Corey to say, hey, let me sever the relationship. Because I have no respect for this man, and I don't think he's bringing anything significant to the table. So let me sever the relationship, all right? But he doesn't want to because he feels he's getting knowledge. He's getting knowledge from Zoe. Now, from the conversation, I can see that Zoe has made a lot of connections, has introduced a lot of people, and uh, has been that kind of conduit, that middleman between people, between parties, and making that connection. So maybe he networks a lot, and he knows a lot of people, but he can't quite get over that hump to get the platform of the exposure he needs or wants. So he attaches himself to Corey, right? Now, I don't feel sorry for Zoe at all. And Corey was outright disrespecting him. He 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 kind of low key challenged him to a fight, dared him to a fist fight. Yeah, he he, he kind of low key and, and and really, you know, I say low key loosely. You like it, it kind of was some may say straight up challenged him to a fight and challenged his manhood. And I don't feel sorry for Zoe. All right. Listen, man, at a certain age, 
you can't be under another man, right? Now, in your 20s or teens, early 30s, you know, just depending on your maturation, but definitely not in your 50s or 40s, man. Uh, you can't be under another man. And Corey kept saying that too. He kept saying, anybody that's under me, blah, 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 blah. Anybody that's under me. <laughs> I didn't like him saying that, but hey, this is what these guys signed up for. You got to come together with a man at a certain age in partnership. Partnership, man, where you guys are both bringing equal value to the table. It may not be the same things, the same resources, right? But it has to be equal value. Now, although Corey says Zoe brings knowledge, he obviously doesn't believe it's equal value to what he's receiving, right? He doesn't believe it's equal value to what Corey brings to the table and he himself brings to the table. So that's where the disrespect lies. Now, I guarantee you, within that same scenario where I explain value and bringing equal value to the table or not, if Zoe was in his 20s, Corey would not have that perspective. He would not have disrespect towards Zoe if he was in his 20s, if Zoe was in his 20s. But since they're the same age or around the same age, Corey feels like, man, come on, man. You should be doing your own thing. You should, I shouldn't have to promote anything for you. I shouldn't have to do anything for you to elevate. That's how he feels. But he's been suppressing this stuff, keeping it all in, right? And it just came out. It came out at the at the... Right or wrong opportunity, you know, right time. Now, some would say, man, this is the wrong time. And I can see that. That was the wrong time on a public platform. It's only a wrong time for the naysayers or negative view viewers or the people that want to stir the pot. Now, for the, the students, the learners, the deep thinkers, the people that are looking to grow. This is a teaching moment. All right. This is a teaching moment. And so that's why I'm not I'm not coming down too hard on either guy. And I'm not defending uh, either guy too heavily. You know, I'm trying to be objective. I see the the the, the right and the wrong in both guys. Corey. If you don't respect people on your team, don't have them on your team. It's not right. I know it may give you a sense of empowerment because you kept saying the people under me. Yeah, I just have a different way of managing. I've managed people. I've managed projects. Uh, I just have a different way of managing. Uh, it's like I use we. You know, I'm only as good as my team. My team is only as good as me, as the head. Uh, but we're all leaders in our own right, right? There's not one leader. There is one head, right? One point of contact, right? But we all have to be leaders in our own in our own right on the team. I don't think Corey sees it that way. So. Don't have people on your team if you don't respect them, all right? If you don't respect their value, don't put them on your team. And Zoe has been on the team for 10 years. Man, that, that's a long time, all right? Zoe, believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Do not sacrifice your manhood or your dignity for treasures or limelight. Don't do it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it at the end of the day. All right?
So don't do it. Um, and this goes for everyone, man. Um, you know, uh, recently, I'm going to say recently, about three months ago, I joined this group on this business venture. And it's a venture I don't have a lot of knowledge about, right? So I told my guy, the guy to put all this together. And it's like six people on the team. I told my guy, I said, hey, man, um, hey, I'm good uh, removing myself from the team, you know, because I just don't see, I'm not bringing a lot to the table on this venture. And my guy was like, nah, man, got to have your part of it. Man, you brought two team members within this venture that bring so much value. He said, we wouldn't have these two guys on the team if not for you. That's your value. I thought about it. I said, you know what? You're right. The two guys I, I, <laughs> I brought to the team, man, I would say the second and third most valuable, you know, the head guy who brought it out, whose ideal this was, whose baby it is, he would be number one, right? But none of this comes together, right? There's six people on the team. The two guys I brought in are two and three in value, right? So there you go. So I did bring value. Uh, but I didn't want to be on, I didn't see it at first. So I didn't want to be on the team because my thing is, yes, this is going to be very lucrative and that's cool. Right. Uh, but I want my respect. I've got to respect myself when I look in the mirror and I want to respect the others. Right. I talked to my guy, he gave me another perspective of it. And then I did see the value of what I brought. Right. But I won't sell my soul, my dignity, my manhood <clears throat> for riches. And this thing is going to be very lucrative. It, it ain't worth it. I'm going to get mine regardless, man. Like, what's for me is for me. If it ain't for me, it ain't for me. But I won't sell my soul, right? And that's what I see a lot. That's what I saw a lot of in that conversation. A lot of things have been suppressed. Um, you know, a lot of things have been traded in for the wrong reasons, right? And I wanna say something else. It's okay to be used. Yeah. Being used means you have value. It's not okay to be misused or to misuse, right? That means there's a lack of respect. But yeah, I wanna be utilized. Use, utilize, that means I bring value. No problem with that. Just don't misuse me. Right. And I, I try my best not to misuse anyone else. Uh, I can't think any time recent that I, I misuse someone. You know, I have in, in my life, but yeah, I'm too I'm too old to <clears throat> have to face that type of karma and that type of lesson. So I try to do everything in the righteous way. But yeah, check out that video. Um, some people may find it entertaining. I didn't really find it entertaining. I I was uh I found it you know kind of sad, bitter taste in my mouth. But then I was like, man, you know what? This is a teaching moment right here. People can really take from this. It's like wow, wow. This is uh you know what's meant to happen happens. So it was meant to, for that to happen, for someone, someone to see that and learn from it. I just don't believe in accidents. So, yeah, check it out, man. And uh, thanks for joining me. Toast to the man.